Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be fairly short. Uh, somebody commented on my last video and they asked me to make a video about placement exams at NGIT. So that's what this video is about. I mean, you probably read the description, so you already know. But it's not going to be super long. I'm just going to try to give you all of the information that I have and that I have found. And hopefully you find that this is useful. Also, if there's videos that you guys would like to see, you know, just comment them down below and I'll try to get to the videos that you guys comment or any ideas or information that you want to know, I'll try to get to that. So you should definitely do that. I'm going to start off with the basics and that's what exactly is a placement exam. So a placement exam, it basically just determines your first level courses. So that's the course that you're going to take in your first semester at NJIT. And this is for English, math, and uh, there are some other subjects, but the main ones are English and math. What I'm going to talk about with the placement exams, it's a little bit different for international students, and I don't have all of the information about taking a placement test as an international student. So a lot of this is basically if you're going to NJIT from, um, like, as a non-international student. A majority of students have to take at least one placement exam, and I'll talk about that more later because there's like exemptions and stuff with that. And usually these exams can be on campus or online. So I took mine online. Yeah, online. <laughs> uh, and now there are no on campus exams because, you know, right now the campus is closed. So it's like it's fully online, which could be a good thing for some students. Um, but that's how they're being executed right now. These exams are important. I know somebody asked if they're important. So they definitely are important. And they're important because they determine that first level course that you're going to take. And in a previous video, I talked about the catalog and how it shows what courses you need to take. So this placement exam, since it's determining like what English course or math course you're going to take, you want to see if you're going to be on track. So it's important because if you don't do great on the placement exam and then you're a class behind, of course, that's not the end of the world because you can always catch up. But ideally, you want to hit that benchmark on your placement exam to be right on track with how you're going to start your major. I'm going to talk about the math exam first because that's the one that I took. So I know more about the math one. Yeah, the math placement exam starts around March and it goes through August, so you have a few months to take that exam. I personally had to take it before July because in the second week of July, I had new student orientation 1.0, and so I had to take the math placement exam um, in order to get an invitation to the orientation. So I took my exam in June. I was like done with it and I could start the process of making my schedule. So what you should know about this exam is that the highest math class that you can place into with the exam is Calc 1. So I know that there's students probably out there who are seniors right now taking AP Calculus AB in school and that's AP Calc 1. And you still do have to take the math placement exam because usually you're taking it before you get your results from the actual AP exam in July. So you're taking the exam, I don't know, let's say April, May, June. So you take the placement exam regardless of what math class you are right now in high school. Once you get your credits, if you get credit for the AP exam, you can send them in and then you can start to take Calc 2 or whatever other math class is required for your major. So the highest class you can place into is Calc 1 with the placement exam. Unless at the time that they want you to take the placement exam, you already have college credit for Calc 1 and college credit, I mean it's from a university that can transfer that class into NJIT because not everything can transfer depending on the difficulty of the course. So if you have college credit or if you already have AP Calc results and it's if the score is high enough for NJIT to, to use that credit. So let's say you got a 5 on the AP Calc 1 exam junior year, so now senior year you can send that to NJIT and you probably won't have to take the placement exam. But if you don't have that, you have to take the math placement exam regardless of any other scores. The exam itself is not proctored when I took it, which was last June, it was June 2019. It wasn't proctored, so it was like similar to an online quiz. And as I remember, it was all multiple choice. 
on the exam, you can't use a calculator. So, you know, make sure that you know the material. The calculator is, of course, it could help, but in this situation, you can't use it. So there's other things that you can do. You should definitely study for this exam because it is important in placing. And I'm going to link some study materials below. But NJIT provides four full sample exams for the math placement test. So you have all the sections and like the correct number of questions. So there's four full practice exams that you have access to. They also provide questions like practice questions and answers for you to look at. Well, you can solve them out and then check your answers. There's about 150 questions that they provide. And even if, let's say you take a look at this material and you kind of remember, you kind of don't, you should refresh yourself because you want to shoot for Calc 1. The, the test itself is about two hours long. So it's actually all together, like just the time you're taking each section, it's an hour and 45 minutes. That's why I said about two hours. And the math exam has three sections. It has advanced algebra, basic algebra, and trigonometry and functions. For the sections that are 30 minutes long, they each have 25 questions. And the section that's 45 minutes long has 30 questions. So I'm going to be honest with you, you really don't have time to waste. Because yes, you have a little bit over a minute for every question. But some questions you're going to get a little bit more stuck on or they're going to take more time. So there's definitely no time to waste. The trigonometry and functions, I had to rush it a little bit. So just make sure you're working fast and you're efficient. And the way to do that is really to prepare for the exam. Because if you prepare and you know what you're doing, you're going to fly through those questions like that. Get your results back for the exam that you took. It takes about five to 10 business days. They send you an email um, with like the score for every section. If you see that your score does not reflect your ability in math or what you actually know, then you can retake the math placement exam once. And you can retake it only once and it has to be at least two weeks after the first time you take it. Before you take the exam, um, the placement exam office will send you like a link and a login and instructions for you to take the exam. So don't worry about that because they're like gonna hit all the points and you're gonna know exactly what to do. They're gonna send you everything you need before the exam. So let's say you don't do so great on the math placement exam and you retake it again and you don't do so great and you don't place into Calc 1. So depending on your major, you're gonna, and depending on the scores that you get, they're gonna place you into a different math class. So that could be trigonometry or pre-calculus, and then you're gonna have to get to those like stepping stones to get to Calc 1. So it's not the end of the world, you know, it, not everybody starts out taking Calc 1 their first semester. And you just take the classes that you need to take and that's all. So yes, study for this exam, but don't overstress it because no matter what happens, it's not, it, it doesn't like change if you can get your major or not. All right, let's talk about another fun placement exam that there is, and that's the English exam. So depending on what your SAT score or ACT score is, you might actually not even have to take the English placement exam. However, if you are an international student, regardless of your scores, you are required to take the English placement test. So let me tell you what I meant about the SAT and ACT score. If your SAT writing language score is lower than a 28, then you need to take the exam. And if you're submitting your ACT scores, if your ACT English score is lower than a 19, then you also need to take the English placement exam. Other than that, you will most likely be exempt from the exam if your score is higher than the two that you need. This exam is shorter than the math placement exam. It's only about an hour long and the exam consists of you writing two essays. So you have 30 minutes for each essay and the English placement exam, obviously it also places you into your first level English course. So you can check your catalog and see what course you want to strive for. And you can also just, you know, practice writing essays. There's not really practice material online. Not that I have found. Whatever you can do could help. So basically, as I said, that you're going to have to contact them or I think maybe they contact you first. But regardless, there's going to be communication between you and the NJIT placement exam office 
on when you're going to take the exam and once you register for the exam I got my instructions about a day before the exam so what I can say is that you probably want to take it as early as possible because then you'll have less stress about it and it won't be like sitting on your shoulders so that could be a really good thing and also if you're taking it early and there's problems with communication you know sometimes email communication can take a while especially if a lot of students are taking it or if you're communicating with them during the NJIT finals week so if you start working on that early then the communication like you'll have more time to communicate if something goes wrong and remember to definitely study and review material just so that you can really ensure that you're doing your best and you're setting yourself up for success because you know like I said the exam is very important but it's also not the end of the world but you do want to like strive to hit that benchmark class so just do whatever you can to get to that point there's also this useful tool that NJIT provides it's like the placement calculator it's for the math section so basically you can input like hypothetical scores that you would get on the uh, three different sections and then it'll show you what math class you'll place into I'll link that down below I'll probably like show it somewhere on the side right now um, but that's very useful because then you know like what what scores you need to achieve to really help you like see what you need to study or you know anyway I know this video is probably super short but I just wanted to give you guys some information about placement exams because that is like a big thing probably when you're going into your freshman year you're, you probably have questions about that and a lot of people take it so I just wanted to give you guys information that I had and that I found maybe it'll make your lives a bit easier and all of the resources that I talked about for the math exam are down below in the description so go check those out and really if you have any questions or any ideas for new videos don't hesitate to comment and don't forget to like and subscribe. The next video will be about move-in essentials, so stay tuned for that and I hope to see you guys very soon.